So I just filmed this whole video and my camera wasn't even on. Welcome back. Uh, I'm currently just outside of Coffs Harbour, just south around the Yurunga area. Um, this whole coronavirus business that's going on, uh, I'm sort of stuck between the Gold Coast and Sydney, just self-isolating as I've been doing for the last six months. We are going to do a little bit of a different video today. I'm going to go through my top 10 lures. It's been a while since I checked in and told you guys where I am. I get hammered online for telling people where I am and, and also get hammered online for not telling people where I am. So unfortunately, I just think that the between the Gold Coast and Sydney is just a little too crowded to be telling people the exact location of things. Um, so I've decided not to go, but I hope you guys are still enjoying the journey anyway. Yeah, right now, uh, I'm going to be doing a lot around this sort of area, the Coffs, just south of Coffs. Yurunga and Nambaka. Um, I also have to go North Coffs uh, this weekend for a little bit of a trip that I'm really excited about. Uh, a little bit of a different trip. Yeah, I'm just sort of stuck. I uh, want to get into Sydney and see Daiwa and then sort of work my way back up north as well, but I'm not sure what's going on with the whole coronavirus, so I'm just going to sort of mill around this area and just keep doing the best videos I can. I filmed a video yesterday and I won't have time to put it together before tomorrow night, which is when I want to upload this one. So I decided to just quickly jump in and show you guys, I've been meaning to do this video for a while, my top 10 lures uh, that everyone must have in their tackle box. If you've got any of your top 10 that I miss in today's video, or you've got your top 10 that you want to write down, down below, be sure to do it. If you like this video, make sure to give it a like. Uh, YouTube's been punishing me a bit lately for not uploading regularly and something that I've been working on. It has been really, really difficult and a massive challenge for me to get regular videos while living in my car. Everything just takes longer. I'm not complaining, but sometimes I'm stressing and pulling my hair out, even though it may look like I'm living the dream. Uh, a lot of the times I am uncomfortable in my car trying to get stuff done on my laptop. So anyway, Without further ado, I'm gonna jump into this. These are my top 10. So you guys may have your top 10, but these are my top 10 that I'll always have in my tackle box for the rest of my life. Except the first lure that I'm about to tell you is uh, number 10 on my list is actually the Z-Man Grub, two and a half inch, and the Z-Man Slim Swim. Now the only reason I don't have any in my car or boat. No! The only reason. Sorry, Mill hasn't hit that tide stage, so she's just up jumping all over the boat and knocking things off. Yeah, number 10 on my list, and the only reason I don't have these in my tackle box at the moment is I actually gave them all away. Uh, they're number 10 for a reason. They're my starting lures. If you guys are looking into getting into lure fishing, the two and a half inch grub and the two and a half inch slim swim are the way to go. I remember watching a YouTube video when I was first getting into fishing and this guy was flicking them underneath boats and underneath um, pontoons and he was catching brim and trevally and whatnot. And I was like, as if you can catch these things underneath pontoons on the Gold Coast. I've never known anything of catching brim other than bread and prawns and any, any scraps, chicken breast or whatever. I was like, how can you trick a fish into eating a, into a plastic? And I just had to give it a go. And ever since then, I remember it just changed my world. I was addicted to lure fishing. So if you're looking to get into fishing, the two and a half inch grubs and the two and a half inch slim swims, they would just catch about just about anything. Flathead, brim, whiting, jacks, you name it. I caught so many fish on Moses perch. I caught, yeah, I caught so many different species on those lures. They were just always my go-to. I remember I used to run three pounds straight through fluoro. I never caught any big fish but you just used to catch everything. So number 10 on my list, two and a half inch grubs, two and a half inch slim swims. Go and get some, doesn't matter what color. I did a video one day on the every color lure challenge, which was the slim swim one, and I caught a fish on every different color out there, and I think it was like 21, 22 fish in one day. It took me three and a half hours to complete it. Uh, it was just one of those days the fish were on fire and they were just eating anything. Uh, I tried it not too long after and I didn't even get a bite, but it was just happened to be one of those days. I did that video to show you guys that it's not about the color of the lure, it's more about the more about the action and the profile matching the bait. And I remember after so many people messaged me and said, yeah, but what's your favorite color? What color should I buy? And it's up to you guys, they all work. That was the whole point of the video. I will say that I did learn a tip off the Americans watching some American bass videos. The way I choose color these days though, if uh, this is the one that like for most consistent fish, is whatever you're fishing the bottom of the bottom of the water. So if you're fishing mud, 
throw on a brown one. If you're fishing rocks, a red one. If you're fishing like ready rock, fish a red one. If you're fishing weed beds, I used to run like a, a watermelon red, which was like a green one with a red fleck through it. Fishing sandy, greasy prawn always used to be like one of the go-to colors. And that's because if you're fishing over sand, that's really gonna match the sandy bottom. So that's one of the secrets. Oh, and if you're fishing darker water, low light conditions, you want darker. And if you're fishing sunny days, clearer. So always just follow whatever's on the bottom of the river that you're fishing or the lake or whatever. That's the color that I would choose to, to catch the fish. Um, that's one thing I learned off the American bass fishing and it seems to work over here in Australia. Number nine on my list, and you guys would have seen this in a lot of videos, it was one of my go-to top water lures for a long time, was the Sugar Pen 70 mil. Here we go. The Sugar Pen 70 mil and the Sugar Pen 95 mil. These things used to just absolutely slay the trevs, the jacks. Um, anything that was taken top water, I lost a few to Taylor. These were just my go-to. Chasing trevs on top water has got to be one of the funnest things you can do on shore, especially on light gear. And these were my go-to. I remember doing uh, lots of different videos on these ones, losing a ton, and that's why I have a ton in my tackle box, is because if the fish are really fired up, they're gonna nail them. I used to fish a lot of landlocked lakes as well, and I'll give you guys a tip. If the normal retrieve of just walking the dog across the surface isn't working, make sure you just try a quick burn. At least a couple of times a day, try a quick, quick burn, just flat out along the top so it's just skipping along. I was fishing this landlocked lake once, and I must have fished it for like 20, 30 minutes, walking the dog, never caught a fish, cast it out, burnt it back in just before I left as oh, fast as I could, yeah, hooked up straight away. Again. It just seems to fire They're those treads up. I also remember fishing oyster oh, racks and I gave it about 20, 30 minutes and I was walking the dog all around the oyster racks, yeah. nothing. Burnt these things and had more jacks come up and bust me off than ever before. A fast wind sometimes, just skimming it along the surface oh, will the always work it. better. So always, like it. if you're using oh, these things, make sure you're jack. testing out the fast wind as well as the walk in the dog, because sometimes it can make all the difference. So jack. number nine on my list is the Sugar Pen 95 and 70 mil. Whiting, brim, trevally, jacks, you just catch everything off the top, and it's awesome. Number eight on my list, and it's down the list a fair way, because I don't do a lot of offshore fishing, but when I do do offshore fishing, I've actually got two lures coming in at number eight. And that is Z-Man Streaks Extra Large Bubble Gum. If, if you're going offshore, make sure you've got these in your, in your tackle box. So many trips I used to do um, where it was dead and you used to tie these things on and you just used to catch fish. I don't know what it is about them, but like no, sometimes no scent, just tie it on. I remember a trip I did with Rock, Rod, Rocky Holy Kit. Moly. I remember a trip with him. We had three kayakers out there, all live baiting. No one caught a thing. I hooked up and got busted off on something big on these lures. Um, I remember another trip, we couldn't catch a thing apart from a little red rock cod. Tied these on, oh, got busted off that, again. I've also caught my, one of my biggest kingies I ever caught out on a boat with Billy. Um, on one of these things, everyone was throwing top water and stick baits. Oh I saw God. the kingies were sitting on the bottom, tied one of these things on, bang, got me my very first big kingfish. These things just worked. Brock's caught a lot of big dew on these things. Streaks, extra large, bubble gun. Brock got me onto them when we are out chasing dewies at the pin. Cover them in mullet goo and they'll work pretty much every day. This is also number eight on the list and I'll never go offshore without a few in the, in the box, is the Berkeley Gulp Nemesis six and a half inch. Doesn't matter what color in these things, I've got the, got this color, I don't even know what it is. I've got this like opening night color. I've got nuclear chicken, I've got pearl, I've got like the coconut, I think it's coconut, which the pink and there the white. If you're going you offshore, think? the snapper love them. I've, people catch big tuna on them, jewfish, these are just my offshore go-to, the six oh, and a half inch wow. nemesis. I've caught rainbow runner on them. Wow. I've got my biggest oh. kingy ever on one of them out with Hacho. Oh. Just don't go offshore like without the, the Z-Man uh, Z Streaks and the Gulp Nemesis. Two of my go-to offshore lures coming in at number eight. Moving on to number seven, and I had to have a vibe in the mix, and that is these ones here, the Zeric Fish Traps. Now there are a lot of fish traps on the market and a lot of them work. 
but these are the ones that I've stuck with. I've caught a couple of really nice big barra out at Mondrian Dam, and I've caught lots of flathead and jewfish and that sort of thing on these things. They just seem to work. Uh, there's lots of other ones that work as well, yep. oh, but they're the ones that I'll always go back to just because they get the job done when a vibe is necessary. I think watching a lot of JJ, JJ Edwards fish on videos got me into these ones. They, they were the videos that he used to use these a lot for the big flathead and used to just catch flathead and dune non stop and I thought, man, I've got to get these things. If they can catch fish like that, let me have a go. And they do, they work unbelievable. So number seven on my list. Mel! Number seven on my list is the Fish Trap 95. Um, any color, choose your favorite color, doesn't matter. It's like the slim swim thing. Try and match the bottom, try and match the bait. That's what you're looking for. Number, that was seven, number six on my list, um, and this is the reason it's number six on my list. Caught a lot of barra and mondarin on these things. These are pretty much the mondarin special. They'll work. I mean, every barra and mondarin's seen a thousand of these, and yet they still eat them, uh, is the jackal squirrel. Another reason why they're up there on my list is I've lost too many of these to count to jacks on the Gold Coast. I used to use them a lot when I was getting into jack fishing. Um, I used to use the ones that had the the rattle inside for the jacks, but up at the dam you look for the silent versions. I've got them in the shallow diver and the deep diver. But if you're looking for a nice barra, jack, lure, these things slay the flathead as well on the flats. The jackal squirrel oh, should be on everyone's top 10. They just, so realistic and they just work so well. They've got such a good action for them. You just can't beat them. The reason why Jackal doesn't need to advertise is because they've just got good lures. If you're going up north, you can get these ones. You can beef them up with quite solid hooks too, the Hank Tune ones, because of the way they, um, they because of the no weight inside them. So they're silent, they don't have the rattle, which means less weight. You can put more beefy hooks on them, but they just work. The Barra absolutely love them. Not even in the dams, but just like even out of the dams, I caught some nice barra and some creeks on these things. I know Brendan's lost a few barra on the Gold Coast on these things. I've heard people getting 60 plus centimetre jacks on the Gold Coast on these things. They just just make sure you've got a couple of jackal squirrels in there. Doesn't matter, again, don't worry which colour. Choose your favourites. These are the ones that work up at the dam. That's why I've got them here. But I've also got some other colours as well. I did, actually. And you know what happened? The sun killed them. They all exploded. So, um, yeah, that's a shame. Number six on the list and should be on everyone's top ten, Jackal Squirrel. Number five on the list, and you have to have a popper, is the Lucky Craft G-Splash. I've got three different colours there. I lost an absolute behemoth of a jack when I first started jack fishing. I'm pretty sure on that exact lure. Um, and then I went out and bought some different colours. I've got a couple of jacks on this bad boy here, um, that cleary colour. I've also um, got a ton of trevs on them. I uh, also got a black for those darker water and that sort of thing. But Brock, when he was working at the shop, got me onto these things. He said these are your go-to jack top water lure if you're looking at getting in jacks on top water. And within like a couple of days of throwing them, I had that absolute behemoth that I missed. I'll see if I can dig up the footage for you. Mick Horn, using them, made them absolutely famous. Now everyone on the Gold Coast throws these things and they still work. So that's, it's a good sign. It's always a great sign if everyone's using them and they're still consistently catching fish of a good lure. Number five on the list is the Lucky Craft G Splash 80 mil. Number four on my list is the Mick Molnar Splash Porn. I can't wait to try his new bigger ones out. But the, uh, the small one, the 70 mil version, designed on the Gold Coast, and you know it's a good lure if they import them or whatever and they test them in some of the most populated areas in Australia. Not the ones that they import, they drive 17 hours up north and throw them to fish that have never seen plastic before. These things were tested on the Gold Coast and some of the most popular, and Sunshine Coast, some of the most populated area, and they still consistently catch fish. You know they're a good lure if you don't have to go north to test them out and they just they consistently catch fish in some of the most fished areas on the planet. So I think I caught a 51 centimeter jack on that exact lure there. It's missing half its bib, unfortunately. So that's the end of that one. That will go on the wall though. I don't think many people have caught a bigger jack than that on the splash prawn on a six pound. That's probably one of my special fish of all time. So coming in at number four, Mick Molnar splash prawn. I think he's got a 95 mil coming out which is like just that boss size, so I can't wait to give it a crack. But if you don't have these things, go and get some in your tackle box. I know everyone's already got them because there's a guy 
I was staying with who works at Mo Tackle and he said you just can't keep these things on the shelf. I think it's um, John Costello, uh, my lure box, gives these a massive wraps and everyone just froths over them and they're still consistently catching fish. So number four on my list, thanks Mick for designing these things. You can pop them fast for the trevs, pop them slow for the brim, pop them fast for the whiting, the jacks will take anything. You leave them in the water, sometimes 20 seconds, and the fish just have to come up and have a bite because they just look so realistic. So that's them, number four. Number three on my list, and the reason why they, that is, uh, these ones have only recently become number three on my list, and it's purely for the fact that I just caught a fish of a lifetime on it, on one, this lure here, the Croker uh, Dewey Lure. Um, these things, I only just got one. I remember seeing them all over social media. People catching big, big dewies with these things. I thought I had to give it a try. I was talking to a lot of people and they said, if you want to catch the big dewies, use the hard bodies. If you want to consistently catch small dewies, use the soft plastic. The big dewies just must come up and feed closer underneath the surface on the right oh conditions goodness. than the smaller ones. So you get better at reading your conditions and go and chuck some hard bodies if you want a big dew fish. But, but if you're looking at getting into your dew fishing, this is the number, like this is the one that I went with. And I remember it started raining. It's the first rain we had in ages. I made my way to the break, break wall and I just threw them for five, six days. And eventually I took that one, that one there. It took the red head. It'll work in any, co any color. I'm pretty sure they're just after that action. Um, they probably sense it through the sides of their body rather than the color, but the red head did, did the damage for me. The good old fashioned red head. So that there, Croker coming in at number three on the list, purely for the fact that I got a 1.5 meter, 29 kilo fish of a lifetime. Number three on the list, the Croker lure. Number two on my list, I've actually got two lures to show you. They both have really similar actions and that's why I've chose them. They both got the segmented body and swim like, like an S shape. Is the Jackal Gantia one of the best sort of swim baits you'll ever get. No surprise there, the reason these bad boys are up top is because I just love swim baiting. I've seen some absolute crazy stuff happen on swim baits and that's why these things are coming in at number one and number two on the list. But the Jackal Gantia, that lure there, that exact lure, I actually got my PB Jack 57 centimeters underneath the pontoon on the Gold Coast. Just slow rolling it past, come out and nailed it. Got me in all sorts. That thing, they just so realistic. They just swim so beautiful. Make sure you got one of them. Oh, that's a big fish. Oh, that's a big fish. Oh, let him run. When they get this size, there is literally no reason why they won't swallow that thing whole. Holy cow. And Brendan got his PB Gold Coast Barra underneath the pontoon on that color there, the hitch color, uh, meter 30. Like that's just a fish of a lifetime, whether you're up north or down south, but meter 30 Gold Coast Barra on that little there, on that exact color there. That's why I went and picked it up. Brendan and Brock both got me onto these bad boys. Jack or Gantia. I think I picked my first one up to go cod fishing but have been addicted to throwing them in the salt water ever since. And also number two on the list, we got the Primal Jackson. I got my PB River Cod, 85 centimeters on that one there. They're half the price, they're $29, but the reason they're $29, you get what you pay for. Oh, oh my God! Oh. How's this? The whole camera crew's out for the day, eh? Well done, you start bro. losing things and starts chipping off bits of the body when you're casting them. So you may only get one fish ever on these lures before you have to retire them, but that fish might well be the fish of a lifetime for you. Brock's got both his Gold Coast Barra on, one of them on that color and one of them on the black color. So they just work. The Barra Ooh, love them. It's like a meter 20. Nah. Meter 10? They're just slightly smaller as well, so you can get some absolute monster jacks on them as well. The jacks love them. They twitch really well. They've got a slight body roll to them. If you're looking at getting a cheap swim bait, but also be prepared that you might have to buy two or three of them to last as long as one jackal, which is 65 bucks. These things are only 29 bucks. So number two on the list, if you're into swim baiting, I know a few people bought them for flathead. I haven't heard much stories about them with the flathead, but I'm sure you would get them. Make sure you go and pick up a couple of Primal Jacksons and Jackal Gantys. Coming in at number one, 
My throat's getting sore because this is the second time I filmed this. Coming in at number one on my list, the reason why it's number one is just because of the quality of fish I've seen come out on it, the quality of fish I've caught on it, and some of the fish are just fish to remember, is the Gancraft Jointed Claw. I have two there, this one's a slow sinking and that's a slow floating. Um, if you're gonna get them, make sure you get the slow sinking. They just swim a lot better. And also you don't have to rig them up with weights to get them suspended right. Just put some nice new hooks on the bottom of them and they should sit almost suspended or with a very, very slight sink depending on your conditions. That there, not that exact lure because I actually lost the exact lure, but uh, that there I got my 97.5 centimeter flat end on the flats. And I've also got teeth mark of jacks over 60 centimeters that have come out and belted it. I've got some 50 plus centimeter jacks on this one. I've got some nice big high 40s jacks on this one. Um, they're just the most realistic, best swimming action, easy to work. And it's also oh. very addictive because you watch yes. the lure the whole time past the pontoon, you see the jacks come out. I'm gonna let you guys know one of the biggest secrets for me that I kind of keep to myself is when you're throwing swim baits around pontoons, you start to work out where the biggest jacks are because not only will they come out if they're hungry, but they're gonna come out just purely for territorial reasons and they're gonna come out and show you where they live. Then you can start mind mapping the Gold Coast and, and keeping an idea of where the biggest jacks are under which pontoons. Once you start seeing those jacks come out, if you do end up missing them, then you can start going back and targeting those same pontoons with different lures until eventually they're gonna to get to bite. I caught nine jacks last season and I think five of them were over 50. And the reason why is because I purely was throwing swim baits for them. And it's just, they're just an insane thing. The black one there, um, a lot of the time you're throwing your swim baits in low light because that's when it's going to work best. So I got my flathead in low light, also got a lot of my jacks in low light, uh, like overcast days and stuff like that. The black seems to work really well because it's casting out that massive silhouette. I've got some sick flathead on that and also chucked it around on some of the clearer days and got some nice jacks on it as well. But number one on my list, they're not cheap. They're about 89, 90 bucks or something like that. They're not cheap, but they're not cheap for a reason. They're extremely good quality. Unless you get busted off or cast them off, they're not gonna break on you. You can catch multiple fish. I teeth mark all over that one there. They're just a good time. So number one on my list for best lure ever is Gancraft Jointed Claw. Thanks everyone for watching. Uh, it's been a massive challenge for me this year trying to be consistent with videos and quality content and all that sort of thing while living in my car. It's something that I've been working on and sometimes I'm pulling my hair out. I know, I know it may look like I'm living the dream. Sometimes it doesn't feel that way. I have way more uncomfortable days than I do have comfortable in the um, comfortable days in the car. But I want to say a massive thanks to everyone who's come up and said hello, come up and offered me a room and a shower and all that sort of stuff on the road. I know you guys do it through the messages and sorry I can't get back to everyone. It's just one of those things that I really struggle with. But I've just met that many people just out and about that it's just the way sort of I've been going about this trip. And I want to say a massive thank you to all you guys that have come up and offered your assistance along the way. You guys have truly been the ones that have kept me on the road doing this thing and kept me positive about the whole thing. So thanks everyone for sticking around. Also, even though the videos come out a little bit longer apart, man, I work like pretty much every day on this sort of stuff, but it just takes longer and longer to do things. And I'm gonna keep working on it over the years to come, so. Stay tuned for part two of this video, which is gonna to be top 10 worst lures I ever bought and I'll never buy again. Uh, I don't know when I'm gonna film it, but I'm gonna try and get another uh, part two of this video up. If you guys think I've missed any lures, wanna put your own favorite lures down in the comments below, make sure you do. Make sure to give this video a like. Uh, means the world to me. So thanks everyone. See you on the road guys. I'm off this weekend for another adventure. Hoping to have my next fishing video up next week. It just takes me a while to get through and do that editing phase, but I'm gonna be working hard to get up next week. So see you on the road guys. Enjoy the journey.